partnered by Times Influence. platform that brought together the game changers of the retail industry. So first of all, a warm welcome to all of you uh, to, an evening, to an event that's organized by the Franchise India Group. Indian Retail and E-Retail Congress 2017 saw a stellar lineup of power pack sessions. The two-day event culminated with an award ceremony to felicitate the achievers in the retail sector. This international convention also aimed at bridging the gap between retail and e-retail. This is a great uh, event, I think. We should hold this every year and uh, give opportunity to people who are there in the industry to come ahead. and. You know, this will be a giving a platform to most of the new entrepreneurs who would like to come into this industry. This is a very growing industry. Definitely, you are playing a big role. Sir. It's a great platform, actually. Uh, there, are no, there are not many platforms for our retail industries. And uh, it's a great inspiring and it's a great motivation for us that uh, we, we, got this, we get these recognitions uh, on this platform. So it's a push. It's a great push to us to work more harder and to achieve more and more goals in life. The event started with an enlightening conversation between Ritu Maria, the editor-in-chief of Franchise India and Entrepreneur Media, and Arvind Varchaswi, the managing director of Sri Veda Sattva. The way I have always understood FMCG industry was that there was uh, these companies who used to build um, FMCG as an organization, brand by brand, and you know there was a brand head who used to manage one particular uh, one particular category or one particular, and then they used to go on building brands. And surprising, when you know I have when I read about the kind of work you're doing at uh, Shri Shri Tatwa, I realized that how much the FMCG industry has changed. Today it's about one umbrella brand trying to build a lot of multiple brands, multiple products within the larger brand and then taking it on to the consumer. So what is, what is your take on uh, Shri Shri Tatwa? And please tell us a little more about the brand. The past 35 years, there have been so many projects that what um, Gurudev has taken up and has touched the lives of so many people. Now, we also saw uh, there are so many initiatives that what we take on, whether it's education or organic farming or actually skills development or empowering rural youth. So we found the uh, necessity, as what you actually put the word, the right word, the need. All right? The need of the hour was also to see how we could bring in a consolidation to all these initiatives as well. Because we were creating so many skilled people we were actually educating people about organic farming. We were educating them about good products, about how products need to be paraben-free, uh, attending to the entire part of allergens in products. So we saw that all these things needed a particular framework, and that's how Shrishi Ayurveda was born. Now, what is your distribution strategy going to be in the coming months? you know, both in India as well as globally. You're picking our products more on e-commerce. That's something that we're really concentrating on and really building. But at the same time, we're also seeing that our traditional model of trade uh, also increases multifold this year. Why so? Because the uh, market is really, uh, you know, asking for our products. So keeping that in mind, so why do we need more stores? Because uh, say, for example, the number of Ayurveda doctors, the number of... Um, you know, people coming across, you know, to take on Ayurveda would be a little limited. So the moment you need, the moment your need uh, so happens to be an FMCG sort of a model, you definitely need to ensure that you have more uh, uh, physical spaces as well. So which is why we are extremely aggressive this year and the coming years to see that we are actively uh, increasing our physical stores. Do you also see adding entrepreneurs in this table? 
uh, to see if they could work with you in terms of distribution and reaching out and educating the customer. Very much, very much. Um, our, uh, our particular distributor setup, whether it's in India or in abroad, we do have uh, you know, proper uh, super stockists, then importers or distributors are among them. But we also inculcate and encourage entrepreneurship. We also incubate certain people who have this spark of becoming an entrepreneur. So we incubate them, we give them our products, we tell them uh, you know, how to market, what needs to be done. So we also incubate entrepreneurs as we go. We look a lot towards the West when it comes to business ideas. Where do you think we need to look within India to see those ideas that we can make for the world? You know, actually, uh, if you ask me, um, I feel that there's nothing that what India cannot achieve. In terms of an advice, I feel that the uh, people sitting here uh, are the essence of the entire retail industry. And I'm sure that they would agree with me that a change and being dynamic is something that what the industry always uh, needs to be open to. And I think that's the, uh, that's the way forward. Uh, for example, now, say e-commerce one year back, or say three years back, would be that you have a central warehouse and you distribute from there. But today, how does e-commerce work? Is that you send the order to the nearest retailer and they give it to you within about two, three hours. So what used to take about seven days to reach, reaches you in about, say, three, four hours. So I feel that retail industry uh, does have a major part to play in the future of e-commerce as well who really revolutionized the way how products are actually delivered to people. There's a lot less in terms of transactions, there's a lot more in terms of productivity, there's ease of payments, and the consumer is happy because he's able to get it much faster. Sometimes it so happens that uh, I would want a product, and it's so important that I have it today, because I might be traveling tomorrow. But if I were to order it online, I would get it only after, say, three days. But if I were to go to another franchise outlet, I'm not sure whether I'm going to get what I want. But here I am sitting on the e-commerce engine, exactly uh, seeing as to what I want, but I'm not able to get it on time. Mm -hmm. And I feel that's where uh, the uh, opportunity. Uh, opportunity lies for retailers also going forward to see how they could fulfill these uh, orders. From making customers realize what values they get, uh, for them to see how products typically get delivered to their PIN code, what values, uh, you know, what typical time frame is for a product to get to them. A uh, lot of data analytics are going to be uh, what drives customers to the website. So both uh, customers having the knowledge of what they need to buy, what, what they can buy, when they will get it, plus any other information that tells you uh, what the product is and what what uh, what they can buy and at what point uh, that is truly what is going to help them. Uh, more than anything, it's complete adaptability and speed. Um, it's knowing what's happening around the corner. Uh, brands and companies, you know, in the West are having major issues not understanding and assessing uh, the e-commerce market. So the consumer is being spoilt, and we need to understand that uh, uh, we have to continue because once she's spoiled, there's no going back. So you've got to give her that perfect service, speed, give her that uh, you know, fulfillment. And that's what's changing now in retail, especially here now in India. It's moving much faster. The next session gave valuable insights on putting the customer first in a multi-channel world. It also delved into how the customer journey will evolve in the future. start with you Deepak just talk a bit about how you know uh, you know from a Crocs point of view what is it that you guys look at it as an omni-channel experience there are obvious benefits of having offline stores because uh, you know uh, there are a lot of sizing fitting uh, emotional connect a consumer gets when they shop offline uh, but with the digital space moving very fast the most of the journey starts from the digital. So entire research, entire shortlisting happens on the web. And then it's, uh, you know, it's concluded either at the store or on the online platform. So what we have done at, as a first step is linking our web store with our exclusive stores. 
the next stage would be linking all channels as a seamless experience for a consumer. So a consumer can use various tools to purchase, to research, to return, to pick up. So it could be click and collect so that our kind of product category, which is uh, more of fitting sizes, gets uh, resolved, wherein he can choose, select, order, but picks up from the store. Uh, second is the return, which in our case is as high as one third, 33%. So that can happen at the physical store, although you can purchase online. In your category, looking at grocery, looking at fresh, is that, is that something that, you know, you have different kinds of challenges where consumers have to buy every day? How do you deliver that? I think the omni-channel is uh, an apology. Apology for the offline. It is also a defense mechanism for the offline. Omni-channel is not an option. It's not an option for an offline guy, but for an online guy, I think he is disadvantaged by the fact that he does not have an offline. Omnichannel for grocery is also driven by the fact that grocery is bought at least twice a week, 70 times a year. There is no other category which is bought so many times in a year. What is it that you guys see in your category in the food space because you've always been omni in some respects? It's actually fascinating what's happening in the food retail space. So. Yes, you're right. Uh, Pizza Hut has been in the country for over 20 years. Uh, we've been um, largely a dine-in player. We've been a significant home service player. And over the last three years, since the time we switched on uh, e-commerce, uh, e-commerce meaning accessing pizzas from our websites or our mobile app and stuff like that, we've gone from a zero-person contribution to uh, more than half. What is it that you guys look at from an omni Omni experience for consumer for their for your for your consumers and shoppers. Customer, in my view, they still like to have the touch and feel experience of the offline store. They still want the customer's experience. They still want the uh, uh, store ambience. But all these things are making the customer also move towards another thought process, which is convenience. Technology, which is making some of these things possible, we have we have started considering technology as God. We started considering it as the end objective. In my view, technology is not the aim. It's only a tool. It's only a means to re reach that end objective. And the end objective is customer delight. What is your, uh, you know, you guys obviously a much larger, larger retailer across fashion, accessories. You also have a you know, a much bigger global global footprint. What are some of the things you guys are doing? We are now going and resetting ourselves. We have now started uh, testing the omni-channel. What we are doing is uh, we are just linking our stores, linking the stores to the warehouse so that customers can pick out whatever the size they want. Either it is available at the store or it can be delivered to their house. So we are starting it in a small way, understanding how it happens. And over the next three years, we will start increasing the omni services. For instance, in Dubai, we are now testing click and collect. So you can click at home and go to the nearest store and collect. Or return at store. You can buy it online at house and return it at store. So all these facilities we are testing in Dubai. Very soon we'll roll out in India. And in the new era, brick and water alone is not going to help. E-commerce alone is not going to help. Those who are able to marry both in a meaningful way, in a sustainable way, are going to win the game in the respective segments. My thoughts on the future retail market are really driven around the evolving and maturing needs of customers. And I think the single most important thing is to stay focused on the customer. Firstly, I think that customers want much greater associations with the brands they consider important in their lives. They want to be affiliated and they want to be connected. The second thing is really customer expectations around the ease of doing business with a retailer. They want that experience to be seamless and very easy in much the same experience that they have in their personal lives in the digital world. Blending of uh, this whole online world and offline world and doing it in a seamless fashion is something that is definitely required. Okay, no longer are people either offline or online. People are offline as well as online all the time these days with their smartphones in their pocket. At the same time, people are also getting a lot more used to pulling the information on demand. Uh, Fifteen years back, uh, if there's a question, if there's any doubt that comes to your mind, you would ask 
a person next to you or you would wait to get home, get online and then check it out essentially, right? And that is not the case anymore. So whether you're buying everything online or not, you're consuming your first level decision making across all categories is happening online. On the other side of the break, we get you the winners of the Franchise India Retail Awards 2017. Indian Retail and E-Retail Congress 2017 saw retailers from the Indian and global markets brainstorm on digital innovation and transformation in the retail sector. Franchise India puts in a great work forward in connecting businesses with the franchise uh, franchisees. You know, people who are there living in Tier 1 and Tier 2 cities are in need of good businesses. And uh, this provides us with a platform how we can reach to them. You know, so the business fundamentals are far better when you introduce a franchisee because there are two financial partners doing the entire thing. Um, I believe that's the right way to grow and it's a fast, you know, way to success. Emphasizing on the importance of ideation, IT Minister from the Government of Karnataka, Priyank Kharge, gave a keynote address on how innovation and technology are changing lives. We've always heard states talk about uh, being the ideal investment destination, you know, when we, uh, including ourselves in uh, many ways. So we have this big Invest Karnataka meet, Gujarat has vibrant Gujarat, Kolkata has something, the Jharka, Invest Jharkhand is there, Invest Maharashtra is there. So everybody is talking about their states becoming the destinations for investments. But I think the government of Karnataka is the only state that has sort of tweaked that uh, narrative and we are the only state that calls up other people to innovate, invent and invest in Karnataka. So there's a way, lot of difference between us and the other states. And when my uh, Department of uh, Industry says innovate, invest in Karnataka, I have to step back a little because being the Department of Information Technology, I have to also understand that innovation and invention does not happen overnight. And I insist, and the Department of IT and the Government of Karnataka insist that we should also ideate. So we are the only government in this in the country that feel that ideation is a very important and integral part for innovation, investment, uh, invention and investments. And we are the only department who are defining the next in the ecosystem. If any of the startups has this great idea which they think can disrupt the vertical, all they have to do is register with our startup cell, ask for an open house where they can come in and showcase their product or their idea to a committee of experts. And if it gets through, or if the committee thinks that this, vertical, this uh, idea is a very creative one or a disruptive one for the vertical or for the government or for uh, the private sector, we ensure that we give you a grant of up to 50 lakhs with no equity at all. We don't take any equity. So, this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to uh, develop ideas into proof of concepts. So it's not, uh, we are not telling them that, uh, look here, your idea has to be a working prototype. We are helping people build prototypes. And to ensure that we are ahead of uh, the rat race, we, always, we have something, the department has something called the open houses. So wherein uh, startups come and interact with me and my team, and we sort out issues right then and there across the table. The reason for having such open houses is so that we understand that when we were making policy, it suits the stakeholders and it is just not a policy which the government think is right. So 
uh, that is the reason probably we have some of the most successful startups in uh, Bengaluru like Ola, Flipkart and Inmobi. And uh, at the same time, we are also proud of emerging companies like uh, Team Indus who are uh, daring to put, uh, who are daring to dream to put a low cost robot on the moon for explorations. And all this has been possible because of the ecosystem that uh, Bengaluru has for ideation, innovation and invention. And this has been possible only because of the timely uh, policy interventions from the government keeping in mind the stakeholders' interests to ensure their prosperity. So we are very clear that until and unless our stakeholders prosper, we don't prosper. So we take opinion from them, we ideate with them, we ensure that whatever policies that we are bringing in are progressive and not regressive. So ideate, innovate, invent, and of course, invent in Karnataka. And I wish you all to stay inspired. Uh, and thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. Customers expect if they order online or in the store, a delivery at the same time. So one transit shift we're seeing in the industry is uh, reducing the supply chain. So supply chains are more and more becoming digital, which is reducing the inventory required. So manufacturing is only happening once the order is placed or for next one week or two weeks. That's where the entire industry changes. It works purely on technology. It works on analytics. It works on sensing the demand and producing only for next two weeks. And then it was time for the Gala Award Ceremony. An evening of glitz and glamour that celebrated and awarded the best in the business of retail. The first award category was for the CDIT and Telecommunications Retailer of the Year. And the winner for this category was Reliance Digital. Next award for the Regional Retailer of the Year, South. And the winner for this category was Ripple Fragrances. In the category of Store Design of the Year, above 1000 square feet, the award was given to Himalaya. In the outstanding e-retail performance sports brand category, the award was given to HRX by Ritik Roshan. The award for the best omni-channel retailer of the year, Accessory, was backed by Tony Q Retail Brands. Next award for the category Apparel Retailer of the Year goes to Sports and Leisure Apparel. And finally, the Retail Leadership Award was backed by Mr. Vineet Gautam, CEO Best Seller of Fashion India. Times Influence.